This is the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash, and this is episode 59. Should entrepreneurs go to college? All right, let's do it. Welcome back. Today is November the 24th, 2016, and a very happy Thanksgiving to all the U.S.-based Liberty entrepreneurs in this community. This episode is about college and if college is still a good investment. Basically, what's your ROI? Did you even calculate it? Used to be just fact that after high school, to be anything, you go to college. It secures you a job, it secures you a career, a, a decent paying salary, and you can take care of yourself. But I think those days are coming to an end. So we chat with Derek McGill, who dropped out of college during his sophomore year because he felt like he was providing more value outside of the classroom. He created a marketing company and a t-shirt company online and started making a couple thousand dollars and finally decided he's an entrepreneur. He doesn't need college anymore. It's too expensive and it's just holding him back. Also, speaking of Thanksgiving, just like a lot of stuff that we learn in public school, it's propagandized and we don't know if it's the truth. We're just supposed to take it as fact. But Thanksgiving was, and I learned this from the Mises Institute, Thanksgiving was when the, the pilgrims actually cast off socialism and they started dividing their farms up as private property. And we all know that private property means you're gonna take care of that property. And so the bountiful harvest was a direct effect of eliminating the casualty of the commons. Basically, you're not going to overgraze your cattle on my land, and I'm not going to come eat the fruit or the vegetables that you grow in your land. So now everyone had good harvests and private property now allowed us to reap the rewards of our own labor. So let's celebrate that. I'd also like to remind you that this show is sponsored by Exodus.io. They are looking for a JavaScript developer who considers him or herself a Liberty entrepreneur, wants to work from home, is excited to be in the fast paced cryptocurrency space. So if this sounds like you, send them an email over at founders at exodus.io and tell them that Ash from Liberty Entrepreneur sent you. And I hope this opens up a lot of freedom for you in your own life. So without further ado, let's get right into the show. So today's guest is Derek McGill. He is a college dropout marketer and business strategist. He dropped out of college during his sophomore year and decided to become an entrepreneur instead. This is right up the alley of Liberty Entrepreneurs. Derek, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ash. I'm uh, excited to be on. So tell us just a little bit about yourself and what gave you the idea to drop out of college? Yeah, um, so I went to a normal public high school. Uh, it was sort of early on in that period that uh, I, 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 mean, I've, I think I've always been a, a bit, I don't know, anti-authority, a bit contrarian, but sort of early on in that process, I, uh, I got introduced to Ayn Rand uh, sort of outside of school and through her got introduced to a lot of other kind of liberty thinkers and uh, uh, individuals who, who started, I guess, to wake, started to wake me up to the fact that, you know, a lot of my... Uh, a lot of the things that I thought I was being taught in school, you know, I wasn't. I was really only being exposed to a very narrow breadth of information. Um, and I realized there's this whole other world out there. And I, I started to, you know, find more valuable intellectual experiences outside of the classroom. And sort of grew increasingly disenchanted with uh, the school system because of that. Um, I decided to go to college because... You know, I got really into like classical studies during that period too. started studying Latin and ancient Greek and uh, uh, mainly because, you know, I, I saw them as sort of the foundations of, uh, in many ways, kind of classical liberal libertarian thought and wanted to really see, you know, what was 
the reason these people were so influential on the development of uh, human liberty uh, later on. And um, I went to college because I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to have this really great experience. I'm going to get to interact with people who are you know, into big ideas and who are grappling with tough questions. And uh, uh, I'm going to get to write essays and connect with professors at a deeper level in a way that I never got to do in high school. And this will finally be the time that I get all of this, uh, uh, this really great intellectual experience. Um, and what's the type of advice you were given in high school about going to college? I mean, it was just a no-brainer. It was, you know, you go to college because everyone goes to college. That's where you learn, and you got to get into the best schools possible and, you know, get good grades and get your test scores in and, uh, you know, uh, do all the, the extracurriculars that you need to pad your resume. You know, it doesn't really matter what you're interested in, but just do those narrow range of things that everyone says is uh, best to get into college. So, you know, play sports. Uh, I was a starting quarterback in high school, and uh, I hated it, and I ended up quitting. But the reason I stuck with it so long was because everyone said, oh, it's good to get into college. You know, it'll look good on your resume. Just stick with it, Derek. <laughs> Yeah, um, isn't that amazing that you're, you're you have to do things you don't want to do yeah. so you can get into a college that you may or may not like? Exactly, so, it's very, very, very weird. And uh, I, I fortunately became cognizant of it. I think a lot of young people don't, and uh, I started to break away from that towards the end of my junior year. Yeah, so let's skip forward a little bit into college. And now you went to which college did you go to? I went to the University of Michigan. Okay, so so it's not going to be some cheap college that community college that you can do on the side and work. I mean, this is this is a four year type of university oh, yeah. that's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah. What was your mindset when you went into college? Where was your mind going then? Like your expectations of going into college, and then what you were actually getting. So I, I was a little different. They were they were lower, I think, than the average person because I never thought that you know I, I always wanted to start a business, and I never thought that I needed a degree to start a business. I always kind of thought, well. You know, why would I need a degree if I'm going to run my own thing? Um, but the reason I went was because I wanted this intellectual experience primarily, and I really did think that was going to be good. Um, what then ended up happening, though, is I found classrooms that were full of people who didn't want to take the courses, who were there because they needed a certain requirement for their uh, specific degree course, um, professors who didn't want to engage with the students, uh, who, who did not present the subjects in an exciting, compelling way. Uh, there was certainly a lot of limitation on, on thought and creativity. Uh, there were uh, obviously, you know, I, I got involved in the kind of libertarian club and, and became the president of that. And uh, uh, that was, was one of the most uh, enjoyable experiences my, of my life, and that was certainly a valuable part of college. But um, throughout that process, I became aware of the fact that, uh, number one, you know, the, the campus environment is not very uh, uh, healthy for, for someone who has you know, an interest in, in the ideas of liberty. But two, um, all of those things that I was getting out of, out of that experience, I was going to a lot of student conferences and things like that. I realized, you know, I, I could get all of that outside of the classroom and not pay any money for it. You know, like yeah, I, exactly. I could still participate in the club. I could still go to all the, you know, I was going to like student students for liberty events and young Americans for liberty events. I could still go to all of that, uh, and it, it wouldn't change. I would still have everything that I wanted out of that, and then I would be able to you know, not have to go to class though, and not have to. Uh, uh, you know, spend a bunch of money on, on, on things that I didn't like and support an institution that I found was openly hostile to many of the ideas that I held dear. Yeah. And how, just give us an idea. It's, it's been 15 years since I've been in college, but what was the tuition or how much were you paying each semester? A rough estimate. Uh, 50 to 60 grand. Um, wow. I was fortunate to have my parents covering it. Um, which was was huge. I mean, it was I was very very lucky. A majority of my friends did not have that, and so I started to kind of look around and see most kids were in anywhere from thirty to about a hundred thousand dollars in debt if they weren't on a scholarship. And this is one of the other things that kind of woke me up to, I guess, the the, the challenge of in college was I was seeing all these kids that I knew who were there and openly talked about how bad it was. Like it was an open, you know, thing that college was really not that fun. It was kind of depressing. Kids were unhappy. We were stressed. Uh, we didn't really feel like we were learning much, but they were paying all this money to go there and they were getting themselves into all this debt. And here I was thinking, how are they ever going to pay this off in a, a, a realistic time? Um, and that was one of the other kind of decisions that kind of made me think, wow, you know, 
maybe I maybe I don't want to uh, spend the rest of my uh, the next you know two or three years doing this. Yeah, and it takes a long time. Someone like myself, I I did graduate from college, and I I don't regret it completely. I met some interesting people. I was able to learn how to think very logically and with a methodology of of learning, but that graduating with tens of thousands of dollars in debt, I mean, is a is a real burden. It was a real burden on my shoulder. It took me about seven years to pay off my student yeah. debts, and I think that's quite a bit faster than than most people do. Oh yeah. Um, so Derek, tell us about what was it finally that made you decide? I'm done with this. I'm quitting college and I'm going to go do something else. And what was that something else that you did? Uh, yeah. So it's hard for me to pinpoint like one specific thing, but I would say it was accumulation of a couple of things. It was, you know, in, in one part sort of uh, clashes with university administrators over sort of our club and trying to get dark, you know, you know, we'd, we'd book rooms for events and they would mysteriously get canceled all the time. And it was only our club that this ever happened to and all sorts of other things. And I, 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 I knew there was a sort of hostility towards, you know, our ideas. And that, that was certainly part of it. Um, there was sort of the desire to no longer support these people uh, financially, but also um, you know, just going through classes and, and realizing, you know, increasingly how miserable I was, uh, but then finding, you know, value outside of the classroom and realizing, oh my gosh, all of the good experiences I'm having are outside of class. And I think it was just a long process of really coming to fully accept that. And then I was selling some t-shirts online as well through a website called Teespring, where I would make a design and I would, um, oh, uh, I, I would send it to someone on Instagram and give them a little bit of money or commission in order to post that photo. And, and so, you know, I made like a thousand dollars a month uh, off of some t-shirts that I was selling. And that was sort of a moment where I thought, wow, I really like this. I love business. Uh, I love making sales. I feel like I'm actually creating value versus like in the classroom, you know, in the closest thing you have to it is when you write an essay, for example, you know, the closest thing you get to maybe creating a little bit of value. But the problem is, um, you end up just sending that to a professor and no one ever reads it and it never gets out into the world. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not a very uh, fulfilling environment. Yeah, you're very you're very limited whenever exactly. you're stuck in a classroom, as opposed to an entrepreneur who is able to start building and networking and you know just doing all of the creative, fun things. Yeah, they're stressful and it takes a lot of time, but it's much better, in my opinion, than sitting behind a desk all day and learning from someone who maybe all they've done their entire life is teach and exactly. not build. Exactly. So I had, uh, I'll tell you kind of what, what happened though, is it was funny. Cause I, it was, I had a, a chance to go to a Christmas party that was being held by Ron Paul, who, you know, at the time was like, you know, a big influence on me and someone who I really looked up to. And I, I thought, you know, this is going to be a really awesome opportunity to meet a lot of interesting people, uh, get to meet Ron Paul in a really intimate setting and, and get to talk with these people who, you know, could be influential on my life. Um, and I asked my professors if I could take my finals early. Um, and I was told basically unanimously no. Um, and uh, I decided to skip my finals in order to go to that event. Um, I went out there, uh, had a great time, met a lot of really interesting people who were you know, sort of influential in my life later on. And um, they put me you know, on academic probation. This was the fall semester of my sophomore year. I came back uh, for the winter semester, was on academic probation, thought, you know, okay, I'll just give it one more shot. Uh, but, you know, really just was, was just not feeling it. The classes again were, were stale. They were boring. I, uh, found that I was, had no energy really to focus on anything else outside of the classroom. And really I was just starting to get tired of the fact that all of the adults in my life, the only thing anybody ever cared about was what I was studying. You know, that was the only thing that was interesting about me. It was, where yes. does Derek go to school and what does he study? And I'm like, God, I'm 20 years old and I can't say anything else about myself. Right. Yeah. It's just such an uncreative question too. Yeah. Like, what did you learn in school today? Well, the same thing I learned yesterday, probably nothing. I'm so sick of it. And I think also when I failed all of my classes, my fall semester and realized that the sky didn't fall and everything was fine. And I was like, wow, my life hasn't changed at all. I don't, I don't feel stupid. I'm not stupid. Uh, and you know, things, things go on. Wow. They, you know, kind of broke the big myth that grades are the most important thing in the world. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, we're, we're speaking on 
the 9th of November here is the day after the historic election day between uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And it's kind of like a changing of the president. It, yeah. it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. The sky's no. not going to fall. If you're an entrepreneur, we understand that there is that government exists. And that means that we're going to have additional hurdles and speed bumps and regulations and costs and annoyances getting in our way constantly. It really doesn't matter who the president is because this is just stuff that comes with the territory. If you're going to build, you're going to have to build over and around and through things. And government is just one of those things. It doesn't really change that much. I've I've gotten a, a kick and a bit of a laugh out of all the tears I see on Facebook and oh, yeah. the Internet today about People are literally afraid, afraid yes. that we're going to hell in a handbasket. And I think it's because they are not entrepreneurs. They do not know how to build. They do not feel like they have control over their lives. And so a changing of the president is a really big deal. Let's transition yeah. into Praxis. Uh, longtime listeners will remember I interviewed the CEO of Praxis, Isaac Morehouse, in episode 30. That episode is called Experienced Based Education. We've already chatted with Derek here about what his experience was in school. Compare that with the Praxis program. What is the Praxis program and how is it similar or and or different? Yeah, Praxis is sort of our uh, our answer to uh, you know it's in a sense it's it's our uh, the concrete manifestation of our, our sort of abstract ideas about what education should be. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, one of the challenges with education is everything is, uh, you're, you're never really actually creating anything and you never get to actually build anything valuable during the course of your normal education program. Uh, Praxis sort of flips everything on its head rather than starting just with a bunch of theory. We throw you right immediately into the act of creation. Um, we get you a job at a startup where you know, participants uh, who are ages 17 to 26 uh, work for six months. Uh, they get a full-time job at the end of the program, but more importantly, they're building a lot of practical skills and experiences while working, while getting paid, uh, while studying theory as well. Um, and I think that's the, that's the difference with Praxis, is we have sort of combined uh, you know, consumption with constant creation and so participants by the time they finish the program they've got a, a you know a portfolio of things that they've done they've got a ton of work experience uh in a way that the average college student when they graduate you know they can't really point to anything that they've actually created that has actually done anything valuable in the world and our, our participants can right maybe they have written a couple uh essays that they've turned in, or maybe they've done some labs that yeah. they, you know, in like electrical engineering undergrad, we had to do countless, very tedious, and I think unnecessary labs that didn't really carry over much real life experience. Yep. Then whenever, then whenever I got a job as a computer programmer, I learned more in the first six months of programming in the private sector versus the four years that I had spent in school. It's that experience really is something to point at rather than, Hey, I have this degree. Okay. Well, what does that degree mean? I, I think exactly, you know, degrees are really coming into question now. And just because you have a degree doesn't mean you really know anything, does it? No. Oh God, no. Um, I, I would I would even take it a step further and say it's it's almost a, a certainty that you probably don't. I mean, the majority of kids that are graduating, one of the reasons Praxis is so successful uh, is because people are graduating college without any skills or experiences that allow them to go out and achieve what they want to do. More importantly, they don't even have the self-knowledge to know what they want to do. And it takes them a number of years to figure it out. I mean, I know this firsthand from the majority of my friends who are graduating college now. Um, I've seen it time and time again. While they're paying off the student loans, they're trying to figure out what they actually want to do or what they can do while exactly. they're paying several hundred dollars a month in loans. Exactly. Also, I would say not only do you not learn as much as we're told we're going to learn, but you also pick up a lot of dangerous habits. You get used to jumping through hoops and looking for approval from everybody else. 
you get used to following a bunch of rules and a predefined syllabus and all the steps towards success are lined out neatly. You know, it's come to these classes, get your participation grades, take these finals, get this score. It's all very simple, you know, uh, in a sense, even though you might have to work hard, it's working hard within a very narrow set of parameters. And when you're out of college, suddenly you don't have that structure. And now it's like, oh my gosh, what do I do? You know, um, and particularly if you want to be an entrepreneur, but I would even say if you just want to be a successful employee, but if you want to be a successful entrepreneur, college is going to condition you mentally towards a lot of uh, mindsets that are totally contrary to entrepreneurship. Yeah. And coming back to the expenses again, since we, you know, a lot of people have firsthand experience and I've been writing about the college bubble since about 2009. If you do want to be a, an entrepreneur, not going to college I think is a really good idea. Not only do you take back your time from having to go to classes that you don't need to take. Like I didn't, I didn't need to take a, a statics and dynamics class, nope. right? Nope. I didn't, I, there's a ton. I didn't need to take a history class on the, on the origins of Christianity. Who, nope. who cares? I don't, I don't care about Christianity. Take back your time, take back your money and try and fail and start, yes. you know, a couple startups. Absolutely. I mean, what, why is that? Why is that not an option whenever we're getting guidance from really anyone from high school on? So I was talking to um, I was talking to a kid the other day. This is uh, relevant. He he was you know I think a freshman in college, and he his goal though is is when he graduates he wants to start a craft brewery. You know, that's a big thing nowadays, and uh, that's one of his big goals. And I'm asking him, like, what are you learning in college, you know? And he's studying things like business calculus and in, like, you know, random, like, you know, uh, like a race and ethnicity course for a, a requirement for, like, a liberal arts class and also some other random, like, hodgepodge of stuff. And I was thinking, wait a minute, like, this kid should go work at a craft brewery right now. He should go work at some upstart craft brewery, start working for free get some work experience, uh, and then, you know, wait tables or do something else on the side, save up his money because he's going into debt in order to get this degree, save up his money. Uh, and over the course of four years, he can probably have 20 or 30 or 40, maybe $50,000 saved in the bank. He has a bunch of work experience, potentially working directly at a craft brewery where he'll get to see the ins and outs of how the business is actually run. He's got a network now of people who are actually in the craft brewery space and he's not in debt. He has maybe forty, fifty thousand dollars in capital that he can use to, you know, uh, as some credit for uh, uh, getting a loan or, or to go, you know, invest in a business. Um, that's a much safer path, I think, for someone who wants to be an entrepreneur who has even a clear, who has maybe a clear goal too of what they want to do. Much safer path than going into debt first and taking a bunch of classes that, uh, you know, don't matter. Yeah. So I think it's pretty clear now that entrepreneurs most likely should not be going to college. Now, I'm not saying that there's no role for college if you want to become a doctor or a lawyer or even even maybe an engineer, but now with all the educational line, maybe you don't even need an engineering degree. You can become a, a, a computer programmer in nine months, where you know, yep. whereas it would have taken you a lot longer in school. But talk to me about your business. Yeah. You started a marketing business. I see that you've worked with uh, some brands that I recognize. What was that like? And when did you actually start? Yeah. So, um, after I dropped out, I ended up working for, uh, I, I went to work for my, my family for not very long at all. Uh, it was just, uh, I don't know, three months, maybe four months. Um, and the reason for that was, you know, I had nothing else to do. Um, and, but I was also, you know, still making money off my t-shirts and stuff like that, which, uh, you know, basically sustained my income. Um, and my father, you know, he's in the firearm industry and he runs a, a successful firearms company that sells uh, parts and pieces all over the world. Um, and I offered to run an eBay store for his company, eBay and an Amazon store for, uh, for the company. And I got started doing that. Uh, first month we were doing, I don't know, on eBay, like $5,000 a month, maybe or something like that. Well, not a lot at all, but, uh, within the next couple months, I grew that store to be doing about thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars a month. And then we grew, I grew the Amazon store. I was managing both of these myself. So I was managing all the inventory. I was managing all the fulfillments of the orders and the product photography and the, uh, basically the, the full stack of how you manage an Amazon and eBay store. And I grew the eBay store to uh, doing about uh, 
over 100K uh, a month, uh, about, about $150,000 a month. And um, those were two like eye-opening experiences, uh, really kind of, I don't know, woke me up to the possibility of what could be done online. Um, and I used those sort of experiences to kind of uh, uh, start, you know, getting other opportunities for myself. Uh, I had an opportunity to go do some photography for a local uh, uh, business that I knew of. Um, and I, I started out doing a little bit of work for free. And then I pitched them on doing a little bit more work for, for some paid work. And then I'm like, hey, you know, what if we did this on social media, for example? What if we did this? And, and suddenly, like, I had, you know, my first client. And, and then that kind of just grew and grew and grew to the point where, you know, suddenly I was working with 10, 15 people uh, doing a lot of different projects and uh, running, a, 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 you know, a business for myself that was, uh, I did about, I don't know, $150,000 its first year, which was, was pretty exciting for me, you know, dropping out of college and, uh, you know, going from uh, uh, nothing when I dropped out to, to making that much was, was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing story because I think that there's still a stigma that people that drop out of college just can't cut it or they're not smart or it was too much for them or they just need to drop down to community college and we see a lot of people that drop out of college who are really successful and why do you think that this whole dropping out of college means you're a loser type mentality still exists and do you see it waning oh yeah, it's totally waning um the challenge is that there's still the mentality it's like you're either a loser or you're like steve jobs Whereas like, you know, I'm not a loser, but I'm not Steve Jobs, you know, hopefully right now, at least hopefully maybe one day, but uh, I'm not him now. Certainly I'm not a billionaire, not by any means, um, but I'm living a very successful life that allows me to do uh, pretty much anything I want to do. Um, I would say the stigma, I think, comes from just years of sort of indoctrination into the, the, the idea that uh, academic achievement is the foundation for a successful life. I really just think that most people are uh, have been so conditioned to think that uh, uh, the way we're educated today is the way that uh, you 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 become successful uh, and I guess you know you start to realize once you get out of college though I mean kids who graduate college tell me this too they realize wow none of what I learned in school is relevant to uh, uh, to my life you know it seems like the same things we were saying in high school yeah like, well, when am I ever going to use this? Exactly. It, seem, it seems like college is just an extension to our failed public school and specifically high school system where you you graduate and you, you literally don't know anything except government's revision of history. Or oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, a, maybe a little bit of science and math, which will help you out. But yep. then where all the counties and capitals are in your state, I mean, who really cares, right? And so we go to college, our counselors are – all wise counselors in high school tell us go to college, which we learn just on the same track that we do in high school, except it costs a hundred thousand dollars to do it, whereas we don't have any experience. Exactly. I'll say I'll say one more thing too about uh, why I think why people uh, are are sort of scared of the idea. I think I've learned this more. I, I really do think that it makes people uncomfortable, even people who like, I think people, a lot of people know deep down that college is not valuable, that they don't really need it. But college is sort of a convenient way from, for, to postpone the responsibility of figuring out what you want to do with your life and then going and doing it. Um, and people are scared because they've been in a system that coddles them and raises them from, you know, uh, the moment they're born through uh, 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, even later sometimes, uh, and they've never really had to make a, a, a personal decision that had any serious risk involved. So dropping out of college has seemed like one of those things, and you know, getting out into the real world in general has seemed like something where you know finally the uh, uh, you know the the training wheels are off. And I think it really makes people uncomfortable to to think about that, and so. You know, when they say that dropping out of college is a bad decision, in a sense, I, I really have uh, I come to think that a lot of it's just uh, sort of internal fear that they are uh, that's manifesting as a as a complaint against college dropouts. And socially, it still has a, a weird stigma like we've talked about. But now even we're about a decade apart, Derek, and even whenever I was in college, the Internet wasn't 
a fraction of what it is now and the ability to learn if you're actually a go-getter and you want to learn you just don't want to postpone yes. your own responsibility you can learn almost anything online now i mean as i'm building this podcast i had to learn you know audio editing and some yep. video editing i had to learn adobe photoshop and illustrator and how to set up a wordpress site and you know there's just countless things that you learn by doing that you would never learn by theory and, and this is while i'm on this topic this is something that I've noticed about just the libertarian movement or the Ron Paul movement or the, the Mises Institute in general is it's all theory. Yes. They, they always talk about this harmonious free market, but we never talk about the actors of the free yes. market, the, the yes. actual entrepreneurs oh, doing man. and learning and building. Yeah, and this, this that. is, this is one of the main reasons that I created Liberty Entrepreneurs podcast is I've watched hundreds, countless Mises Institution videos, countless. Yeah. I've read, I've read all the books, you know, I help I help Peter Schiff build your Pacific bank. I mean, I was in as deep as you can possibly get into this Liberty movement, but I didn't feel free because I wasn't really in control. I could tell you about, you know, how Tom Woods helped me understand the, the, the great depression of 1920 and why nobody's heard of it. And look, this is all very interesting information. Oh yeah. Right? I mean, it makes you a much more well-rounded person, but if you don't take that theory and put it into action, what good is it really? That's, that's yes. the issue. So I, I mean, I, I've, I same, same background. I mean, I learned so much from those uh, various institutions and I still do. Uh, I'm still active in them. And I think it's amazing. And, you know, young people who can access that stuff. And what's great is you can access all of that stuff without going to college, too. You know, you can access all of that stuff for free and you can get a better education on your own than you would in the classroom. But I will say I, I agree uh, with your premise. And what I've noticed uh, is, you know, uh, entrepreneurship is kind of all the rage in the liberty movement nowadays. Everyone talks about how entrepreneurship is the way to make social change and all this stuff like that. But I've noticed the majority of these people who talk about this stuff don't actually become entrepreneurs themselves. And, and I speak around the world now. I, I was just doing a big tour in Europe. I was in uh, Eastern Europe. I was in Greece, Bosnia, Serbia, and Poland. And uh, I, I spoke with a lot of different libertarian students there from the European for Students for Liberty Conference. And one of the things I, I challenged them to do was ask themselves, okay, if you had the freedom that you claim you want – you know, let's say in this, 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 you know, all of, all of the uh, problems of, of government were solved overnight and you woke up and you're in a totally free world. No longer can you complain. There's nothing to, uh, no, no excuses can you make. Uh, there's nothing really, you know, to devote your life, no activism or anything like that. No liberty organizations. What do you do now? What, what would you do if you were living totally free? What would that look like? Uh, what would you create? Uh, how would you make a living? You know, um, and most of them have never thought about that. You know, they've never really thought, what, it, what, what do I actually want freedom for? Because freedom is not something that, you know, it, it, it's, it's a means to an end. You want, you know, it, it's a way to get something. It's a way to build a flourishing society. Um, and these kids in these liberty, you know, ideas space never really ask themselves that question. Um, I didn't for a long time, and I've just noticed it can become very, very easy not to do it. So I try to wake these kids up and say, look, you know, focusing on ideas is great, but you know, what else do you want to do with your life? Because there's more to life than that. What, what do you want to build? Really, what, what would your life look like? And uh, getting a couple of those kids to wake up during those talks is always uh, really, really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. It's there's only so long that we can look externally and complain yes. about the situation we've been put into. At some point, we need to accept the fact that yes, we do live in this government controlled aggressive type of reality, but that shouldn't stop us and we shouldn't just sit around with each other and complain about the boot on our throat. Let's actually build something together. Yes. And and I'll say too, um that's kind of one of the reasons Praxis exists. You know, Founder of Praxis, Isaac Morehouse. I mean, all of us on the team were dissatisfied with the current education system. And, you know, we could have taken the traditional route, which is sort of become a reformer where you write a lot and you create ideas and you lobby the government and you pass laws and all that kind of stuff. But we saw that the best way to, to you know, accomplish our goals was to simply build a better alternative. And, you know, 
nowadays when I talk to other kids in the Liberty Movement, younger students and stuff like that, my goal really is to help wake them up and see like, look, there may be a way to build a business around, you know, sort of the philosophical ideas you have and not take the route of politics, not take the route of nonprofits, not take the route of activism, but build a, a viable, valuable alternative for people that allow you to make a lot of money and will allow you to make change on a much greater level. Absolutely, because if the free, if the people in the freedom movement are actually building businesses, becoming successful, and have you know extra income and wealth, then people are going to want to be like us. Exactly. This it, we can't be the fat guy selling the diet book. We have to put our theory into practice, and that's exactly what it sounds like Praxis is doing, as well as Liberty Entrepreneurs. Derek, let's start winding down here. Who have been some of the most influential people in your life? Um, so, I mean, my, my father was, was tremendously influential, you know, he's a very successful entrepreneur who was actually a college dropout himself. Um, and ironically, he didn't want me to drop out. He was very resistant to it. But, uh, I think having him in as an example sort of taught me like you know, growing up, like, you know, I could always start a business, you know, at the very end of the day, if I can't, if something's going on, if, if the economy's in a tank, I could always just start a business. You know, I could create something valuable with my mind and, and put it into action and, and sell it to customers. I just always had had a kind of optimism, I guess, about the market because of that. Um, other people, though, I mean, like I mentioned, Ayn Rand was hugely influential on uh, sort of my, my, you know, view of the world as well as just waking me up to a whole new uh, world of, of thought out, uh, out there. Um, who else has been influential? Um, I would say those two are, are sort of the high level people. Um, beyond that, like Tim Ferriss, you know, was, was very influential on me. I think I read that in college and that one, he, he poses that thing in, in the book where in four hour work week, where he asks, you know, what's the worst that could happen. And that was a, a really big question for me when I was considering dropping out of college was what's the worst that could happen. And, and then I, I started to think about it more and realized, wow, I could always go back, you know, like I could take a year off and I could always go back to college and nothing bad would happen, you know, yeah. and, and that was huge in getting, you know, I think over certain hurdles. And what advice would you have to college students right now who are maybe thinking the same thing as you or starting to experience that the return on investment in college may not be as great as what their parents or high school counselors had told them? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, my number one advice is to take a, take a gap year, take some time off school, get some experience in the real world. Um, if you're not able to do that, if you're kind of stuck in college right now and you, you know, whatever reason you can't leave or you're, you know, I, I don't know, regardless, start doing things now, start creating things now, build a website for yourself, launch a podcast, write an ebook, launch a little side business, start developing skills through the act of creation and start asking yourself, so what do I want to do? And then take action on it within a, a short time frame. Don't wait until, you know, the end of your education. Don't let by the time that you graduate, when you're 24, 25 years old, don't let your degree status be the most interesting thing about you. Uh, the internet with all the tools that we have today, you know, you can start building a business or a project or a piece of art or whatever it is that you want to do. You can do that for, for pennies on the dollar than it, than it used to cost, uh, you know, five, 10 years ago. And you can start that now with no degree, no certification, no permission, no expert status. And by the time you graduate, you'll now have this portfolio of things that you've done that will set you apart both personally, professionally, uh, intellectually, romantically. I mean, in all areas of your life, you will be someone who's, who stands far away from the average college graduate who has a piece of paper and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And just further to that point, more empirical evidence in my own life is I've hired dozens of people from around the world, different cultures, time zones, you know, native languages. I've never, ever once asked someone to send me their uh, A, resume or B, college diploma, yep. because these are just pieces of paper that may at best strike up a conversation about what you're passionate in or what skills you have. And at worst, it could actually deter someone from trying to hire you. Because if I know that you went to college uh, and, and even if you graduated college, that most likely means you've got a lot of debt overhead hanging on top of you where you're not going to be near as flexible as someone who went to Udemy and bought 
10 courses at $50 a piece spent a fraction of what you spent getting your education and they've got actual real world experience and they know how to use Photoshop or they know how to quickly put together a WordPress site yep. or, or they've run a, an email marketing campaign. These are things that I'm looking for. Not if you sat through chemistry class with your B plus, <laughs> um, Derek, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. I really appreciate your mindset of not just taking what the status quo and the establishment tells you to take and thinking outside of the box, taking control over your own life, trying and be, becoming successful and building your own freedom. If we see anything right now, it's that the establishment better watch out with this whole Brexit thing, with Donald Trump becoming president with the internet giving us more opportunity to learn and channels of communication to interact with each other and build online communities. All of these monolithic type of establishments, including everything from universities to the Federal Reserve to the government as we know it, to big corporate business, everything is becoming more and more decentralized and small scale. Derek, you're a great example of that. You're absolutely a Liberty entrepreneur. I really appreciate what Praxis is doing. Please tell Isaac, I say hello again for my listeners. Uh, that is Isaac Morehouse was, uh, is who Derek works with the CEO of Praxis. That's episode 30. If you'd like to listen to that one after you get done with this one, Derek, is there any way that my audience can get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, if you check out DerekMcGill.com, uh, I've got a lot of resources there that have uh, information on dropping out of college, uh, you know, how to get a job uh, without a degree, how to get started in your life at an earlier age than you're traditionally allowed to do. I think your audience will hopefully find that valuable. You can always check out DiscoverPraxis.com as well if you're interested in uh, uh, getting a job at a startup and uh, learning directly from other successful entrepreneurs. And I think you recently authored a book. Yeah, there's an ebook that you can download on my website called How to Get Any Job You Want. It covers a lot of the things that I did as a dropout to uh, sort of distinguish myself in the job process. Awesome. Well, Derek, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, Ash. And there you go. Dropping out of college does not make you a loser. It works for some people. It doesn't for other people. If you want to be an entrepreneur, then I recommend taking Derek's advice and start building your own portfolio of experience. That's going to get you a lot further in this job market than just showing a diploma. Speaking of building your own experience, networking is a big factor in that. If you'd like to join the Liberty Entrepreneurs Social Group on Facebook, then shoot me a message on Twitter at Liberty E Podcast or send me an email info at Liberty Entrepreneurs and I'll be glad to chat with you and see if you're a good fit for our closed Facebook tribe, the Liberty Entrepreneurs Tribe. Until next time, stay thankful and keep building freedom. <laughs>